You're listening to littlepodcast.com. Stepped on some broken glass today. PETA wants Nintendo to depict cow abuse in party game. So you have like these meat covered robots. All right, so <laughs> let's let's uh, get ready with the band because we're gonna get some dick pics. Fuck! No. That is Fuck. how big. Fuck. That is how big they are. Welcome to Born in the Eighties, episode two hundred and sixty-three. I am your host, as always, John Dangero. I am joined by my co-host. Matt Hag and crickets. Okay. J- just, just me, just, just me you. and John. That's right. TJ died. Um, <laughs> tragically, he's no longer with us. He is currently transporting a relative actually, to a location. He's more with us now than usual because he's, he's actually in closer. <laughs> That's true. He is driving his brother somewhere to Oshkosh. In an emergency. So, that's, he is not able, he may tune that's in. That's his story. And he may call in to, to talk to us, but we'll, we'll see. Um, so, yeah, it's just going to be us for today. So, it's uh, TJ fans, tune out. I know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Now everybody's for TJ, gone. Now we can talk about whatever that. we want. That's true. So, guys. So, my social TJ, security huh? number is 38. Yep. Uh, so, so John, how was your week? How, how are uh, how are good. you? We we don't talk just the two of us very often. How That's are right. You? I'm good. Um, stepped on some broken glass today. That's bad. Don't do that. In my in my uh, kitchen. I don't think I cut the bottom of my foot. I think I just stepped like on it and it just pushed in because it doesn't yeah. really hurt anymore. It kind of hurt a little bit, but I didn't see any blood. And there was no blood on the glass, so that that's that's probably good. Hopefully, I don't like have to amputate my foot from like game. You're gonna get glass anything. tetanus, which I'm, I'm just sure is I'm paranoid. Thing. I'm paranoid with my with my feet. So my feet are pretty gnarly looking, so <laughs> uh, I, I'm afraid that I will I will just they'll be destroyed. Anyway, but that's me being paranoid. Um, so, uh, Why was there that glass was, on your floor? That was glass from when I opened up a drawer and my beautiful fiance had put the Tupperware in. And I'm going to blame her, even though it's like 900% not her fault. But the uh, Tupperware that was in the um, uh, like upper container must have like shoved or when somebody grabbed something it shoved like a glass one up to the door so when the door opened it just slid out onto the floor and shattered into absolutely eight <laughs> billion pieces because it landed directly on like the tile floor um and it actually shattered into the living room it, like because it, it had the momentum and all the glass went into the carpet um so that was fun to clean that up so you'll probably um, but, be finding like the cats playing with tiny bits of glass. That's exactly what I think has happened because I sweeped everything, including the carpet, and then like sweeped it again and tried to get everything out of the corners. And then I vacuumed the carpet after I picked up all the big pieces and I vacuumed it twice and I found a couple shards just showing up in the middle of the floor. So I think the cats are just finding them in the corner and it's going to bat them out so I'll step on it like... They're going so to that's traps not cool. for you in the night. Yeah, that's basically what they're doing. They're trying to kill me um, because I didn't put their food out fast enough. So they're retaliating. Um, I don't know. So I'll, I'm going to check the bottom of my foot right now. Just to make sure it's not bleeding. I can't tell. <laughs> just hold it up to I the camera. I think I'm being paranoid partially uh, because um, I can't ever tell my feet. As I've said in the podcast before, I know this is quiet. Oh, as I've said in the podcast before, I have uh, my feet. The sensa- the the sensation of touch in my feet is not so good anymore. Um, I have really bad calluses, like because I think I put one. I, I don't know what it is. The doctor has no clue. Um, Was your feet are just too far away from your brain? Yeah, I mean whatever. But no, but I mean like the idea is is that I. I think I put all of my weight right on the ball of my foot or the, yeah, right in the front on the pad. So I have really bad calluses. So, but 
the sock doesn't even have a cut in it, so I probably didn't cut my foot. <laughs> so uh, I'm fine. Um, but yeah, yeah so if I you just, had I'm a cut glass. on the bottom of your foot, you would notice because that's yeah pretty pretty. Well, that's the, a bleeder the, that area. The th- yeah, the thing I worry about though is that because I have those ca- that really bad like calluses built up from years and years of just that that it I wouldn't feel it because of the calluses, but whatever then it wouldn't bleed i guess because it would just cut the dead skin what else yeah. but my feet are pretty nervous. and then maggots will start growing in the wound and eating you from the inside yeah. out and you yeah. won't know i have i have really terrible feet like i don't know if i can like they are just gnarled up monsters like because i've broken toes multiple times and they're just really long and gross that's it, really. I, my feet are a mess. <laughs> so, it's fine. Um, this has been foot cast. Yeah, and then my knee foot, started the hurting. Pocket. My my right okay, knee me, now, right just, at the top. Let me the just kneecap. find the right I'm dying, clip. The important thing was that I had an onion on my belt, which was a style at the time. Uh, all I'm saying is that my, my knees are falling apart, and my body's falling apart. So that's what happens when you hit thirty, Matt. I know you just you just hit thirty last year. Yeah, I'm almost yeah. Uh, thirty-one, which is a weird oh, thing to think about. Mm-hmm. It's like birthdays just don't mean anything anymore. It's like the uh, fuck it, I don't care. Yeah, it's just basically like, whatever. It's just another day. Who cares? Yeah, once you hit forty, you'll have another one that you'll remember. Yeah, that's that's about it. Um, As, I, I survived another year without dying. Yay, I guess. Yeah, that's pretty much the only accomplishment that we have now. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, man. Now now I know something I can talk about, too, because I think we skipped over it like seven years ago. <laughs> All yeah, right. I, I think I had a science thing I wanted to talk about, and then we never ended up talking okay, let about me it. Find it. Let's find some no, science. No, I found it. Sounds. I found it a million years ago. Let's, let's bail, jump into bail, the science. Bail, 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 bail. Oh, Sam. And th- this is already pre-built to um, segue for you. So um, so I want to talk about Science Corner. So this is John Science Corner, as always. Um, and I had tanted this a long time ago. And then we didn't end up doing it because I remember tanting. Remember, oh, remember your tanting? Breitbart article. Because you love Breitbart. Article. Exactly. You, this Breitbart article. That's where you article, go for all, all of your right. news. Let's see what this other author has written. At the brightest, Something about brightest globalists, part. which is code for Jews, apparently. Wait, nope, nope. Okay, this this uh, this guy who writes for... All right, let me see. Nate Church, the writer of this article, wrote... Um, the most recent article was uh, Artificial Intelligence Takes $290,000 Prize in Poker Tournament. So that's pretty cool. Two okay, charge that's not... Over, nope, yep, exactly. That's what I'm getting through here. full of hate, hatred and white nationalism. Two... Two charged over swatting hoax that led to teen being shot by police. Okay. Uh, prank malware forces victims to pay near impossible game to unlock their own files. Um, Mass Effect Andromeda review. This awful game should have been left lost in space. Goldman Sachs says an asteroid mining rush is coming. Um... I'm going to say that this person hasn't wrote a hate-filled article ever. So why is he working for them? I don't know. Because I, they I let him you publish? Gotta, you got to take the gigs you can get sometimes. But. I just don't. I, like, I'm looking through these articles this guy has. And, I mean, the the most controversial thing he has is PETA wants Nintendo to depict cow abuse in party game uh, one to switch So they're like... You know how, like, in one two switch, you can milk the cow. Yeah, they're, they're, they say that's like abusing the animal. You know, so okay. I Peter. mean, that's as far as we get. Pete's going a little Peter. far on that one, I think. Just, just chill out, Peta. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I don't see. I don't see a bad article that this guy's written. So, good for him. Yeah, Peta, come on, come on now. I think nope, Peter is just uh, like shooting rough themselves sell. in their foot, like or by stepping on glass, protesting all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah, they but, like to but, be but, heard. But, but but what did this crazy 
not n- white nationalist that works for like I the one believe. non-white nationalist that works for Breitbart. What did he talk yeah. about? Um. Yeah, it's it's just kind of like. Yeah, the re- I mean, like, on this website, it's pretty bad. Like, I mean, right at the top, they have three, like, four, five, six, seven, eight, like, sections. There's big government, which I'm sure is terrible. Big journalism, which is terrible. Big Hollywood. Of course, these are all big, you know, like, because the, they're the man, you know. Bigly. Na- national security, of course. And then tech, which is where this comes in, which I think is where all of the non-hateful articles are. <laughs> and video, sports, which I'm sure is probably a little bit hateful. And then the wires, I don't know what that is. It's just news, just the news wire, straight AP news stuff. So so the tech doesn't seem to be super slanted on the bus. Here's the thing about this tech bus, article. So. The comments are not garbage. Yeah, oh, basically. There's... To be there's fair, what, there's there's one talking about uh, dim-witted liberals. So there's one. Bruce. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> this okay. This really is the future of food, and for the billions of chickens, cows, and pigs who suffer and die on factory farms every year, it can't come soon enough. And then the person that co- the replies to that it says, "I'd rather hunt and eat liberals." Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're getting distracted. What's the uh, actual? Uh, I'm just meat gonna also say I'm, I'm gonna article. vet. I'm gonna vet Nate Church's Twitter, just cause you know, cause that's where they like to be. His Twitter is literally just all Breitbart tech articles that he's written, quoted, and him talking to other gamers about game things. Um. Hey. Hey Matt, you want to read? You know how like Marvel said that that their emphasis on diversity may have like caused their like people to stop buying, um, what should we call it? Copies of, um, comics. I was gonna say <laughs> magazines. I don't know why it was like magazines in my head, but comics. Um, and uh, you want you want to hear what Nate Church at Get Ch- to Church says on Twitter? He said, Do "Marvel I thinks know? people." Marvel thinks people are tired of diversity, not ham-fisted reimaginings of the same old characters. Face palmed. Yeah, so uh, I don't think this guy is very conservative at all. No, he seems Tech. like he just uh, needed a, a job. <laughs> I'm gonna give him a follow because why not? I'm like he's got some like Rick and Morty stuff on here. I mean the guy the guy seems to know what he anyway. So he wrote this article that I thought was interesting. And I got a, another one I from the Washington so what, Post as well. What's John? What's the meat of this article? The meat of this article is clean meat, as it's called, which is a weird thing. So the Bay Area food tech startup Memphis Meats is uh, was offering samples of their clean meat. To adventurous t- taste testers. So, like, cl- this is the new term is clean meat. This is meat that is not um, okay. uh, this made is from animals. This is lab-grown lab is cells. scary sounding. Correct. They don't want to say lab-grown. And, they want, and, clean well, sounds and that nice. makes sense because GMOs have been getting short shift just because they got a scary name for, like, Forever. Correct. So, like genetic so, modified. Whoa. That sounds, sounds scary. But so it yeah, isn't get, scary. get out, out of it. Clean meat sounds good to me. I like yep. clean it's just, meat. That it's, sounded it's wrong. It's just like it's just, it's just uh, that's a quote. Um, it's, <laughs> is your cat meowing? Yeah, he likes to scream at me for no reason. Uh, yeah. Okay, I get that. Um, so the chicken strips that they were taste test or saying up for taste testing were grown directly from self-reproducing chicken cells in a lab vat. Um, it says, apparently those who tried it, the taste test, said this is basically indistinguishable from the real thing. Um, and that's what they're saying. Uh, the average, Matt, I want you to guess. Oh, do you have the article up? I don't know if you read this part. Yeah, but I haven't looked at okay, it. Okay, good. Specifics. Don't look at it. it With the scam. average U.S. citizen consuming 
how many pounds of chicken per year do you think the average U.S. citizen has? Oh, I think I heard this statistic before, and it's some huge number. I yes? I don't remember. Like, 80 pounds. So close. You would have won on um, A Price is Right. 90 <laughs> pounds of Jesus chicken. Jesus Christ. Every year, the average citizen. So that's like the average. Like, if you're like me, I probably yeah. eat more than that. I probably like And there are like people who are vegetarians, so somebody's eating double that. Yeah, you're right. You're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah. Um, so that is insane. So that in chicken terms, right? Um, oh, no, so that not in chicken terms. But right now, in the world, there are apparently about 61 billion chickens. This is estimated. That are being raised around the world for their meat so that's a lot of chickens mm-hmm. uh and taking up a lot of room and a lot of food farting um, out a lot of methane yes and um, breathing out their carbon dioxide so actually PETA is behind clean is actually okay with clean meat um because they're saying basically anything that rem- just gets rid of a slaughterhouse is is good even you know you can eat clean meat because no animals died they just took cells and made yeah. chicken out of it well you would think that would be non-vegan because the cells were harvested i guess but i guess i, I guess i'm I just know. surprised you... that PETA's being rational about this yeah apparently they've also contributed funds to early research so i mean i'm all for it because if only if this takes up less um you know like uh you know, land for raising animals and stuff, and it tastes really similar. Um, that's pretty good. Um, so, uh, Memphis meets. So what, uh, yep, go, go. Well, I was just going to say one cool thing about this the lab grown meat movement is that uh, just growing the meat it doesn't really get the texture right. So, some companies mm-hmm. are experimenting with exercising it. So, you have like these meat covered robots. Just doing repetitive movements <laughs> over and over in their factory. This is how this is how Horizon Zero Dawn happens. This is how it starts. We start making these fake robo animals to work the meat and make it like taste better, and they're gonna like go <laughs> off on their own. Like it's gonna happen. This is the future that we've built. It just needs um, uh, uh, some lab-grown calf brain, and oh my god, mm-hmm. it's sentient. Yeah. So uh, they hope to have a commercially viable product by 2021. Uh, it currently costs nine thousand dollars to produce a single pound of chicken, which is. But I think uh, that's something like half what it was less than a year ago. So it's yes, I, it's in rapidly a good speeding up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but of course, uh, growing a pound of chicken on the farm three dollars. So yeah, uh, it's a little bit, a little bit off. Um, yeah, it says right here, it cost the company more than twice that to make a meatball a year ago. Um, so people are like, yeah, the chicken tastes, uh, chicken strips taste like real chicken strips. So uh, at least in terms of like using like meat or like chicken to make like, you know, fried chicken strips or whatever, where you don't really need like yeah fancy looking chicken breasts and it's just like the meat in, in, you know, shapes. Anything that comes in a patty. Yeah, like what your kids would eat. You know what I mean? Like chicken nuggets and stuff. Like, bam. Mm-hmm. That's going to cut down a lot. All right. So there's another uh, meat article from Washington Post as well. That also is talking about another company, Impossible Foods. So they're talking about a plant-based equivalent for red meat. Um, so they've come up with um, a ways to make, like, hamburgers and steaks and stuff. So... Um, right now, Impossible Foods is opening its first large-scale facility in Oakland. Of course, this is all happening in the San Francisco area. Um, yeah. The Oakland plant, which will be able to produce burgers by this summer, um, will prove whether or not you can scale the concept up. Um, and right here, this is, uh, it talks about the emerging clean meat industry. Um, they're talking about, like, Boca and Morningstar, you know, kind of cornered the vegetarian market. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they're yeah, going to yeah. try and appeal to hardcore meat eaters by creating a very meat tasting plant-based product um beyond meat which is a popular vegetarian brand 
um, is also trying to make uh, like mainstream burgers with beet juice bleeding beyond burgers. Try and make, you know, it, it kind of have that color and and uh, texture of meat. Um, and then this this mentions the Memphis Meats making the ch chicken strip at nine thousand dollars per pound. Um, so yeah, this they're, is cool. They're, I'm down they, for all this stuff. We're, like... Yeah, we're a ways we're a ways off here. Possible Foods is by far the largest of the companies. Um, with 182 million dollars in funding, whereas like Memphis Meats only has three million in startup funding, so it's real small. This is moving in towards a, a big, big thing. So the first offering Impossible Meats is doing is the Impossible Burger. Um, so this patty isn't like the lab-grown chicken. This is this is a patty that comprised of um, vegetables, so uh, wheat and potato proteins that they've added the iron containing molecule heme h-e-m-e -E, i think that's how you pronounce it um, which is found in a lot of um natural uh, plants and that heme which is you know like in meat would be hemoglobin which would be the blood that iron mm -hmm. flavor that you get in that red meat that meaty kind of earthy meat flavor that you get um, is, is caused by heme. And so supposedly the plant heme, when extracted, can be, you know, uh, put into these burgers and make it taste like a real meat burger. Um, and reportedly this tastes quite a lot like real beef. Um, uh, let's see here. New York's David Chang and San Francisco Tracy Dejardin have put the burger on their respective menus for $15 a piece. So these are not lab-grown. These are meat, but built like like chemically to taste like meat by including uh, other things so like a lot of patrons give them rave reviews if you look at pictures of them that looks like a meat patty you know like straight yeah, up definitely um fifteen dollars for a burger at like a really fancy restaurant seems like a pretty normal price um but the sourcing is is still a problem because heme which is the iron containing molecule um uh, they originally were extracting it from soybean roots but uh, you can't really scale that up, and it releases a lot of greenhouse gas. That doesn't seem like a great thing. Um, mm -hmm. So right now they've engineer genetically engineered a yeast to produce heme, so they grow uh, vats <laughs> of yeast. Yeah, this is the future of food right That here. is awesome. Um, yeah, so the, co com the company's biggest challenge may be getting it to catch on, not with, like, the whole food people, but just your average middle-income American, you know. And, that, and it sounds like... That's going to be difficult because like right now the product they're saying we're not making this for vegetarians. We want this to be like, Hey, let's get some burgers to make. These are cheap. You know, they're the same price as ground beef. Let's get these instead. And they taste good. So that's their idea. So that, I think that's really cool. They're working yeah. on that. Um, well, if they could get just like a big contract with McDonald's or something, that would be huge. Like that. It, it, yeah, they just need you, the right. Wait, are you reading the article? No, is that does it say uh, that? Correct. It says Brown has also been in talk with McDonald's um, right now. Apparently, that links to a uh, Guardian dot com article with some other photos of the patties. That if you look at them, they look exactly like ground beef. <laughs> uh -oh. Like they they've done a really good job creating this thing. Yeah, um, yeah. It looks been... like they 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 just don't have the capacity to produce as correct. much as McDonald's wants yet. Yes, they're like, hey. Let's think about it, but we don't. We can't scale up to that yet. But maybe when we get the ability to scale up, maybe they can start serving a uh, veggie burger that people like. So that'd be cool. I mean, McDonald's is trying to, I think, trendify itself. I mean, have you seen? Do you see the new McDonald's uniforms? Yeah, the dystopian future. Thing. Oh, you did see it. Yeah, yeah, the dystopian McDonald's future where it's all like blacks and gray. Um, let's see here on social media people immediately said, oh, so, uh, I guess the, um, McDonald's, uh, uh went after the, uh, Imperial, uh, officer design when they went and making these. Cause they're literally just black and gray, like aprons and really understated hats. They, they literally look like Imperial officers, uh, or like hunger games, um, like, uh, dystopian future, like patrons. So. Yeah, well, McDonald's, you know, they're trying. They, they can't be, nope, not everybody could be Taco Bell. Yeah, I went there today. They didn't have anything yeah. crazy for me to try. What'd you get? I just had a 
uh, a quesarito. Mm, delicious good. cheese lava fill tube of taco. And that's another thing. That could have been completely artificial chicken. I wouldn't even notice. Yeah, stuff like that I think is really where the where these um can go. Or if you're even talking about like that 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 impossible foods beef, you know, made of that. I mean, if you could mm. ground that up and it tastes like beef, you could put that in a Taco Bell taco and people wouldn't know. You know, it would taste it's you know, it's all seasoning when it goes to that. Man, now that you've talked about it, I'm going to go to Oh man, I can What am I going to have for dinner tomorrow night? We have to go to Taco Bell. <laughs> so so for a I haven't been in so long. If we're in yes. a Jurassic Park situation, which historical animal would you want a lab-grown burger out of? So, like, okay. Oh, I, I got it. It's not going to be even Jurassic Park. Give me that woolly mammoth burger. <laughs> That's what I want. Woolly mammoth steak. I want a mammoth steak. That's what I want. Let's get the You got to be DNA. careful with your mammoth blend. You, do you want I... the right amount of lean and fat mammoth meat in there? <laughs> I think I think that that could even happen. Yeah, if could. they can lab grow chicken, I think that they actually do have DNA from like frozen preserved woolly mammoths. Get that in there. Let's make some mammoth burgers, mammoth steaks. Yeah, there was. Um, I know a while ago there was talk about somebody wanted to clone a mammoth, and that I yeah. think, like it would have been possible, but there was a bunch of like ethics. <laughs> problems that prevented it from happening all right well, let's look at this group of harvard researchers in a popular mechanics article right here harvard team says they are close to cloning woolly mammoth harvard this is an article from a month ago they said they are close to resurrection of the woolly mammoth they're less than two years away from a fully functioning embryo uh, although insane. creating a fully grown mammoth would take much longer but they're saying we're getting we're getting close because they had quite a bit of the dna um, yeah and they can was... um just implant it into an elephant for gestation and stuff like correct that. yes like close they, enough they think it, correct yeah and they're actually talking about how they've they found kind of a lot of mammoth uh genes uh uh so what they are is taking the elephant genome and then splicing in the mammoth genes that they found into that so they're basically trying to rebuild the mammoth genome from elephant parts. So it probably won't be exactly the same as the extinct version, but it probably will look very identical. Um, so that is some real ass Jurassic Park stuff. I feel like woolly mammoths are a little have bit a soul, safer, and it'll go mad, and we'll <laughs> we'll all die. I'd I'd go for one of those giant um, uh, giant ground sloths. They seem like they'd be tender, delicious. Yeah. Did you see the uh, Nerdist uh, thing coming up too? Uh, they had posted the Hercules beetle pupa, the Japanese uh, researcher had shown. Matt, I want you to look at this video. I want to get your reaction to this video because I thought it was awesome, and I think that you might be disgusted. Okay. Uh. It's underneath your name. And so I only bring this up because bugs, right? People are saying, oh, we're going to use bug meat for the future. But that we might be past that, well, honestly. Bug Watch protein. that video. Um, scroll in. Oh, I already don't want to. Well, I'll look at it move, though. That's what yeah, I want you to see. Full screen. It's a Zerg! Yep, it looks exactly like a little zergling. I was like, "Shit, Jesus Christ!" So that's the they're pupa already of, here. Yeah, that's the pupa of the uh, Hercules beetle, which I believe is the largest insect by mass, something like that. Um, yeah, it's actually pretty cool. <laughs> the The caption <laughs> of the video is like, "A lot of people think that when they're in their chrysalis, they don't move. That they are wrong. <laughs> they wiggle." <laughs> Um, yeah, so actually, uh, I think if you want to see even more gross shit, uh, you can look at the stage before the chrysalis stage, and it's just a giant white worm thing that they are before nope. they become that. <laughs> no, I'm, um, I'm good. I'm yeah, good. Thanks. Um, like, and, and I know this is a, an audio podcast, but this is like literally a red looking like pupa, like aliens, like out of aliens, basically. Yeah, um, yeah. And it. If and you want to see the this... video, just go to twitch.tv slash Matt Hag Music because I just oh, showed pl- it. 
Okay. That's why you got to show liter- up to the live show, people. Yeah. Or I'll probably link the article in the uh, uh, bornin'the80s.net website for this episode. Um, yes, Hercules Beetles are enormous. They're awesome, I think. Um, but they are literally as big as your hand. Like, you could fit, they- you could hold one in your hand, and you would not be able to, like, oh, close no, your hands. Oh, no, no. I'm thinking of the Goliath bird-eating spider. Yes, like, those are huge as birds. Well. Those are fucking crazy. Yes. Uh, I think those are... Is the bird eating spider is from? I can't remember where it's from. Amazon. Is it South America. Yeah. South America. Okay. Because it was in yeah. my Amazon Trail game, that was not yeah. at all like Oregon Trail. Yeah, if you'd like to be freaked out, um, let me just share this uh, image with Matt. You can put that up on the uh, the Twitch stream. Let me just throw. We're talking about giant bugs now. I don't. Is it? Is it the tarantula? Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't, I don't cotton to that. I want you to look at the image that I put up I and put that up. I don't want to. Where is it? It's underneath the uh, other link under Matt. It's called We Need Fun WP Content <sighs> Uploads. Fuck! No. That is Fuck. how big. Fuck. That is how big they are. Jesus. No, fucks. So, so to describe. It for as long as I could. It, it. So it's to describe, larger yeah. than a man's hand, much larger than a man's hand. Uh, it's like dinner plate esque in diameter. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, you think about like, oh, that's not that bad. We're not talking about like your like tiny little plates. We're talking about like a frisbee size plate, and that's like tip to tip of, of feet. Like this. Yeah. I'll put the image on the website as well because that is. You know what? You know what's weird incredible. about that. Like, at a certain point, it becomes large enough that it doesn't yeah. set off my arachnophobia as much anymore because it's just like a furry animal. It's yeah. like no it's longer so a spider big. when it gets that big. Uh, to be fair, I don't know if that image is completely doctored because I don't... Oh, never mind. There's another image here with someone holding it no, with two hands. We're done. <laughs> we're oh, done. It's a, chi- it's a child, though. That could be a person with <gasps> a tiny hand. Um, but they, that, I think that's a particularly large one because I think that, I think they're much closer to, yeah, like not yeah, Let's switch. I, I'm, I'm done. Giving <laughs> you the we've got through, uh, we've got through the, the science news this week, Matt, what yeah. other science news do you have? I started watching a science program on the computer box. Have you yeah, heard I've, of I've heard this wildly fella? varying opinions. Oh, yeah. Build by the science guy. I've All right, heard, in this week's uh, science uh, corner, we're, oh. <laughs> I started watching Bill Nye saves the world, and uh, it's exactly How, what you would expect from Bill Nye. It, it, like it's the style of it is kind of like he's doing a stage show. Yeah, so it kind of seems like something he could take on tour or whatever, and yeah, yeah. Um, it's definitely got like the Bill Nye cornball cheese factor so if you like that you'll like it if you don't Mm -hmm. like that you that's probably where your wildly varying opinions come from uh but i i'm definitely enjoying it he i think a lot of the the opinions also kind of come from people kind of being like hey stop talking about vaccines stick to science it's like "Mm, no that yeah. is science. Well, <laughs> like there was a he, he he doesn't pull any punches. He'll go after the like climate change deniers, uh, oh, yeah. as well as the which like, he should the GMO people. So like yeah, exactly. Both, I mean, science both, is science. Both That's political what he's about. parties have their own like anti-science yeah. bullshit. Um, Bill Nye, the yeah. science guy, is a science guy, not a good feelings guy. Science is science, buddy. <laughs> So he'll he'll have um, like a little short film kind of thing where uh, somebody, one of his assistants goes out and produces like a little segment mm-hmm. and then they'll have uh, a, an, a lab experiment. So like um, he was testing uh, natural, quote unquote, natural medicines and he got... Yeah. Uh, oh, yep. And antacid from uh, Whole Foods that was like herbal, and he yeah. put it in uh, 
a solution that'll change color if it's acidic or basic and it did uh -huh. nothing. Um, so there's that. And then he'll have That's, a segment. Okay, that... I just want to say an herbal antacid sounds like the dumbest shit. Because, like, Here... what's in Tums is just calcium carbonate. You know, I mean, like, what? Like, why here's do you the, need here's the craziest part, though. You know what the herbs are suspended in? What? Vinegar. Which is an acid. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway. And this is a thing that was, like, real expensive. But then he'll have, like, a panel of experts on. Well, they'll just talk. And if one of the experts starts going off into crazy town about anything, he'll call him out on it and be like, nope, that's not it, and shut him down. Oh, nice. I, I heard of people that like would complain about like him having like uh like uh his uh correspondence or whatever doing stuff and it's not all just him and it's like I mean have you did you did you watch the show when well, it was like one of the original cuz there were always is, um, assistants and stuff you know the dude Sorry, from Veritasium uh, have you heard of that it? it's like a I guess it's a pretty popular science education YouTube channel. Uh, okay. So he seems like he legit. Well, I like science like education YouTube. What I'm going to subscribe to that right now. Um, yeah. I, there are some people that are like, you're just like, like there's one of the correspondents is a runway model and she's sounds very smart and articulate, but it's kind of like, I, I kind of get the feeling that she's just there to collect a paycheck. I mean, but whatever. Derek Mueller guy definitely seems passionate about science. That's awesome. I'm glad to glad glad to hear that it that it's fun. I'll have to check that out. Um, Veritasium. Huh. Well, um, what do you give it on your, the the bah? I almost said porn. The porn in the eighties. There's no yes. Porn. I want the patented born in the eighties five star. I think I'm gonna system. give it four stars out of five. Four. It's good. You liked it. Yeah, I think yeah. if you're like me, where you just you kind of seek out this stuff in general, you're not gonna find anything new here. It's the same kind of subjects that yeah, yeah. everybody that's desperately trying to fight against. The ignorance of the world is trying to fight against, but it puts it in a, in a nice package that's fun to watch. Well, that's cool. No, I like that. I think that's what another, yeah, the other kind of criticism I heard was like, this isn't for science people. This is kind of for the people that aren't going to listen to him anyway. <laughs> like, yeah. But whatever. You know what I mean? Lately, at least he can do his try and hopefully some kids will like be on their parents' YouTube account and click on that and be like, Wow, I learned something today. You know, like I that's, learned a that's thing. important. So cool. Yeah, they actually uh someone had a uh, like a gif from the Bill Nye saying I don't remember he was like uh, saying I don't remember what the, the phrase was, but the caption of the tweet was uh well uh thankfully Steve Buscemi can live down the uh, hello fellow kids meme because this is the new one. <laughs> <laughs> Because Bill Nye trying to be dad cool is is kind of classic. But. Yeah, but he does it in su such a like self aware way. That he's oh yeah, I love the guy. Trying I mean, to he's be dorky. Awesome. Yeah, he's he's really cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, he, he apparently does like a reads mean tweets one, and uh, uh, I saw one of the clips was somebody had tweeted saying he'll never forgive Bill Nye because he put out the book Undeniable on like GMOs and climate change climate change and he did not name it bit undeniable with like n-y-e for <laughs> bill nye it's like yeah how'd you miss out on that one bill that's that's it right there that's the title um so yeah cool well i'm glad to hear yeah. that's good uh, to give it an, uh like a an illustration of the kinds of people that he has on as experts the panel for the gmo uh one was a farmer uh, a guy from Monsanto and some other dude that was fear-mongering about GMOs, I guess. <laughs> so, so let me guess. the He probably shut down the fear-monger. The farmer had some good points about how he doesn't like that the GMOs are trying to control the patents on all the crops. 
I'm going to so stop you, you right there, John. The farmer yep. was a woman. Did I blow Ooh. your mind? You Not sexist really. pig. I just, you know what? To be fair, you're right. Because in my mind, I had old McDonald in my head. <laughs> and I was imagining some old guy in like a straw hat with a little grass sticking no, out of his mouth. Farmers are high tech nowadays, too. They're all like, they really they're are. all yeah. into the crossbreeding. And oh, yeah, of course. I, but that, like I know that a lot, they don't like Monsanto a little bit because they do have patents on the seeds and they won't let them reuse them without paying a licensing fee every year. But I guess yeah. that's kind of a thing that is maybe a generational, like, get off my lawn versus, yeah. hey, these there was that crops whole give us a higher Orange yield. thing that wasn't very cool either, but that was a long time yeah. ago. Exactly. Yes, Harry Snodder Peg, we talk to chat as long as you're nice. Yeah. Well... Okay, so hey, we got for... two chatters. <laughs> All right, so let's let's uh, get ready with the band because we're gonna get some dick pics uh, put up on here because that seems to be what happens every time anyone chats with us. Um, no, but uh, yeah, uh, or could I imagine the Monsanto guy was probably a little bit too, um, maybe a little bit too zealous about how amazing GMOs were and like, ah, oh, there's no drawbacks because that's not true either. It's wait, message is deleted already. <laughs> yep, <laughs> they got a little. Oh, it showed up you. on the, the the video though. I know that's right? a that's an oversight. Curly Jew guy. <laughs> yeah, I like it's that. not even like it's like not even like a thing. <laughs> it's like not even a thing though. Like, is he didn't even try very hard. He was just like, all right. This is what I'm going to start off with and then go into my whole ramp. You got to ramp up. You got to draw us in a little bit. Yeah, he, yeah, he just he wanted to, but you're just like, now nah, we're done. <laughs> uh, somebody can't spell Stewie or Peter Griffin, which is funny. Um, my Stewie or, or what? Or Peter Griffin? I do have a large forehead a little bit. I think but... you're a bearded Peter. Yeah, okay. I don't, Peter I don't Griffin's know. Not... Oh, he does have an episode where he has the beard, though. If I could get, do you think I could get a bird to <laughs> so land in my the, beard? The Twitch, to live in my beard? like doppelganger, so we got in chat for you. I have been Peter Griffin, or sorry, Gabe Pe- Newell, Peter, Peter Griffing, and Griffin. uh, Gabe Newell. Yeah, that's right, Gaben. Um, Gaben. Yeah, I, I do collect a lot of knives, so I am very much like Gaben. Um, let's see. What is next on the topic list? Oh, uh, I hadn't talked about something. You talked about something. Let's talk about a TV show I watched that is on Netflix as well. Have you heard of the show My Crazy Ex-Girlfriend? I have, but I have no idea what it's about. It's on the CW. Um, This show is probably one of the most delightful surprises I've ever had in a TV show. Like, (laughs) it's just... Is that that's what our Twitch viewers are? They just drive by <laughs> insult machines because I think that it must be like a past. Uh, uh, who? What? <laughs> like, just why do people? Whatever, man. You live your life. You do what you want to do. Um, you do you. You do you. Um, Except no, but if so being, if doing you is being a dick, then then, then do somebody else. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um, so my crazy ex-girlfriend is on the CW. It's a delightful surprise because what if I were to tell you the show was a musical program? I would be immediately suspicious. So it is a, it is a musical, um, show. So uh, they do about two songs a show. I would say watch the pilot and then you can decide whether or not you want to watch it. Because when I say it's a musical show, it isn't like, oh, this is Glee. We're going to do a cover of like some pop song. It's we're going to write original songs to the tune of uh, here is. I just want to say this. Me as Misery Vampire. The show is very gets very dark. <laughs> um, <laughs> really? Because it's about the the, the premise. I, I gotta say, just watch the pilot because it kind of tells you the whole premise. But the premise is like the main character lady, uh, played by uh, Rachel Bloom, I think her name is, um, and she wrote and created the show. Um, she like works in New York, and 
she like happens upon this hot guy that she uh like went to summer camp with when she was in like middle school and he's like hey you should come to california where i live because it's cool and she's like quits her job like moves out to california for this guy and it's kind of crazy and then like it's like not like la but like some fucking strip mall bum fuck three miles or three hour drive on the highway from the beach like inner california kind of shithole but like it's kind of just about how crazy she is but like kind of about how she's i don't know mentally broken i don't really know how to describe it some of the show <laughs> songs like are, just tons there's of like fun. hobo it is it is super funny and like the songs all generally end up like like one of the characters uh is like a lawyer and his like wife is fighting with him for custody for their kid and she's a lawyer as well um and she moves out to join law firm but anyway fighting for custody for his kid and so he wants to sing about how much he loves his daughter you know and how awesome it is and so he sings up a song that's like uh you know i love my daughter but not in that kind of way you know what i mean <laughs> like it's not that kind of, but uh you know uh, i love seeing her face every morning but like in a dad way you know, it's just really funny because he's like it's just kind of really it's really well written humor and i love it so um big fan of, and that's of on that netflix show. It is on Netflix. The first two seasons are on Netflix. And I think the third season's airing now or is going to be airing soon. So, um, I love it, though. Like, he- like, like way love it. Um, and it's got two, two original songs every episode. The songs are always, like, really original and funny, you know? And the characters are all really good. The people they got are really good singers. Um, I guess Rachel Bloom has done a bunch of Broadway and... Uh, one of the yeah, characters she was they had on was a, in, an episode of the Bill Nye. The Bill Nye, world too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> she sings a song in that too. Yeah, yeah, so she's real fun and really funny, and like it's just <laughs> there's a really good uh, like uh, song called uh, the sexy getting ready song, like getting ready for a party. It's like kind of what ladies do to get ready for a party, and there's like a rap interlude where the guy's like rapping about like how he likes his ladies, and he's like gets slowly disgusted by like all the fake eyelashes and stuff are getting put on. He's like, Oh my God, I didn't know what I was making you guys go through. Like I'll have a, I'll be less misogynistic from now on or something. It's just really funny. Like it's really smart. Uh, I think she won a golden globe for best actress in a comedic television series. So um, yeah, it's really good. Like watch that pilot. Like if you, if you, if you don't know if you want to watch it, I've heard I've heard it described to me as this, and I agree. Like, if if you don't like the pilot, you're not going to like the show. But it does a really good job of kind of encapsulating what the show is into like one 45 minute like episode, because it's got two songs, it's funny, it's just good. Highly recommended. All right, Matt, you're next. I'm writing it down. Yep, it's free. I mean, if you have Netflix, it's right there. <laughs> What do you want to talk about? You want to talk about here is the Storm 2.0? Let's get that Quite done. a little bit of that. We do, um, let me see if I have that. Uh, yeah, this is close enough. Ryuke Waga taking go yourself. Yeah, that's Overwatch. <laughs> it's close enough. There's plenty of Overwatch in here is the Storm now. But yeah, here is the yes. Storm 2.0 is out and it's full of lots of uh, gamification and... Uh, Psychological dopamine triggers and loot chests. Oh, you mean loot boxes? Yeah, is what you're trying to say. Um, yeah, so they loot boxified Heroes of the Storm, and I don't know how I feel about it in some ways because I think it is kind of gross how it works in Overwatch a little bit. Like, you can't usually just buy the stuff you want. You've got to earn loot boxes, you know, to 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 randomly unlock the skins you want, but like heroes before didn't have a huge amount of skins that you could get and a lot of stuff you had no. to pay real money for or a, or a lot of in-game yeah there was a lot get. of stuff that was just gated to like no matter how much gold you had you had to it was real money only and that yeah. was bullshit yeah that was so this fun. is this is definitely way better than it was yeah yeah, yeah. um and the other thing is like overwatch has the loot box system to get in gear and stuff but that game costs $60. This is free. So, you know, mm-hmm. like, 
that that's a little different too. So like if you feel like every couple months you want to throw ten bucks in, get you know a, a stack of loot boxes, why not? You know, like you're not you didn't pay anything for it to begin with. So yeah, I, I think that that makes a little bit more sense. Um, yeah, and they uh, add a lot of content. The loot boxes seem to happen frequently, and um, yeah. Every time you level up any character, you get a loot box, and then every yeah, like five crazy five levels across all leveling, you get um, like a rare loot box. So you get a lot of loot box, and you can re-roll them with gold, and it's pretty yeah. cheap to re-roll it the first time. So and if you're gonna straight you're gonna... up buy heroes, the prices to everyone is reduced now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, it, they're basically just giving you more ways for you to earn cool rewards and they vastly increase the amount of like customizability and rewards that you get you know for your characters so i think all around i've it's been a really playing good a little bit i don't i haven't seen those sprays get used at all i don't think yeah they added sprays like in overwatch but nobody's using them i i don't think people even know how to do it um <laughs> yeah but uh sorry here's my uh, psa and i should probably tell tj it as well if you've never played here's the storm and you really don't think you're ever are going to play Heroes of the Storm, but you think maybe I'd like to try it, you, ha- you have to log in in the next four weeks. Because if you log in, in the next four weeks, you get 20 heroes, 20 paid heroes for free. And, like, what do you think the average cost of a hero is, Matt? Like five, six bucks if you average them out? Oh, I, don't, I have no person? idea what they are real money, but they're, like, between uh, 2,000 gold and 1,500 or- – 2000 gold and 15000 gold. Yeah. I think I think 15000 gold is like close to $15. So I honestly think the average you're going to pay is like maybe $8 per hero. Um if you were to spend money on them, so 20 times 8 is quite a, a bit of free content. Um Yeah, it's definitely and a real good way to get started. So even if you're like, "Oh, maybe a year from now I might pick it up." You might as well log it's free to log in and sign up and get your free heroes. And it, so I've it told... seems to be grouped in a way that is meant to like appeal to people who have like, <coughs> other MOBAs. So it's like, if yeah. you like mm-hmm. the carry, you will like this group or yep. whatever. Like, if you like the tank characters, here's the tank group. That's the group I bought because I only owned two of the tanks before that. So, um, man, I want to play this now. Shit. <laughs> yeah, let's end the show so we can play it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck this show. Yeah, fuck, fuck Born in the 80s. Let's, let's play some, some games. Maybe we'll play a match after this. I don't know. I feel like I want a loot box. No, no, no. We got a little <laughs> more show to do. Come on now. Come on now. But here's what the Storm 2.0 is pretty cool. Um, that D.Va police skin. Oh. In Overwatch. Be still my fleeting heart. Like, or be, <laughs> my, be still my beating heart. Not fleeting heart. What the fuck? Um, no, I, I just like it. Like, she's like my favorite character, so... And then, like, a South Korean police robot, like, future police robot. This is, like, the coolest thing I can think of. So, yeah. They added I Genji to uh, Years of the Storm, and I'm really liking him. So, yeah, he seems he's, pretty fun. He's, like, he, super mobile, it looks like. Yeah, he's really mobile. He's pretty fragile, though. So, you, it's taken me a while to learn, like, just how close to the edge I can play it before I just get yeah. own. Yeah, for sure. I'm a bit. I'm a big fan though so far of like all the changes. The new maps weird. Um, I haven't played any of the new modes yet, but or like the brawls or anything. Yeah, they haven't really added too much in that respect. No, but the core gameplay is unchanged. Yeah, and I really like it. I think of all the mobas I've played, it's my favorite. Um, only because I really hate Dota's complicatedness. <laughs> Yeah, and it's nice I used that to the play... games are usually only like twenty minutes long. That's also a nice thing because we're in Dota. Did you see the the Dota? Uh, comp- oh man, there is a. Uh... Oh god, I'm googling. I want to just make sure I get this right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there was a. Uh, I guess somebody found this. Um, a European West serves of Dota Two at 11 p.m. 10 players queued up for an average unranked match over the course of five hours. Jesus These Christ. players would rage, taunt, abandon, create new accounts, rejoin the game, become good friends and, and bitter enemies. Uh, so, like, basically what happened was, like, 
I don't know. Uh, basically, I think both team compositions ended up with a lot of really turtly uh, characters. So basically, like, the creeps were just not pushing in on either side forever, basically, because every, uh, one of the guys had, I forget what the name of the characters are in Dota, but one of them's a guy who lays mines everywhere. So he was just killing all the creeps by laying mines. And uh, there's a point where, um, you know, you buy items in Dota. There's a thing called the Divine Rapier and, like, the Maelstrom, um, which uh, which are, like, items that you get that just increase your attack, like, you're on, on uh, creeps, like, exponentially. So you're, like, one-shotting everything. But when you die, you drop them, and they can be picked up. Like, near the end of the match, if you watch the replay, there's just, like, 20 or 30 of them just littered all over the battleground because <laughs> everyone is earning so much money that they were just buying all these super expensive, like, endgame items. It's, it was just, it looks like a real fun mess. Um, That's ridiculous. And, and, yeah, I, there's actually, uh, if you look it up, I think Kotaku wrote an article, but somebody did like a 10-minute recap of the entire match that I watched. It was just really fun. It was just, <laughs> it was just like, and then the, like, the people in the chat are like, hey, uh, didn't you like say earlier you had to leave for a plane 20 minutes ago or something? <laughs> like, oh shit, like lives are changing. We can't lose this Dota match. And Kind of, it, it felt like there's a Stockholm syndrome happening, you know, in the matches. Yeah. People are like, well, it's, I can't, it's, I can't it's leave now. Cost, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to see this thing to the end. It's epic. It's it's historic, you know. And it's an unranked, an unranked match. Just, <laughs> yeah, that does not happen in Here's the Storm. Um, the way that the, um, there can't, there isn't a lot of stalemating that happens unless you're in like pro play. But like, I think the way that the the matches and, and arenas are set up is that the things slowly ramp up until it'll just mm. be they'll just end <laughs> yeah so you if, have if to... you were stalemated for long enough eventually the minions would just push all the way to the core yeah because they'll get strong enough um so yeah i i think uh, i think it's a really cool game though and i'm happy with the updates i prepared really... a little musical piece for the next time i have to ban from um, someone from twitch chat uh, i'd like okay. to play it for you right now sure let me, let me just uh... oh snap but now you're going to now you're going to encourage people coming on twitch <laughs> to harass us so they can get you to do that thanks man um <laughs> get that on the keyboard huh yeah <laughs> nice i like uh i like a keyboard soundboard classic um yeah so here's the storm pretty good all right and you you said you played something else what? You played something else here? <laughs> oh yeah, I played a bunch of VR games like uh, uh, Rec Room. Um, I I've heard of Rec Room as being like one of the coolest experiences. Yeah, it's well, it's like one of the the very few social VR games which there needs to be more of because like eventually you just kind of feel like you're trapped in your own little world. Um, but yeah. Rec Room's kind of like uh, a collection of lots of smaller games. Yes. Uh, so they've got like a soccer type game. They've got paintball. They've got uh, uh, dodgeball. They've got charades. Mm. Um, but they just added a laser tag like campaign, uh, which is awesome. And I want more of that. Um yeah, yeah, it's just really cool. It's like, it's really cool to be in VR and to be talking to other actual human beings and cooperating oh, yeah. and being like, oh, you, you dropped your gun. It's over there. Oh, And um, one of the cool things about Rec Room is all of the player like interactions, they try to, to make it something physical. So if you die in the uh, um, the laser tag thing, somebody else has to high five you to resurrect you mm -hmm. that um and, I, and then I've you, just, you I've can like fist bump people cool. to, to, to friend them and stuff like that yeah it's a, it's a lot of fun and then i also played hot dogs horseshoes and hand grenades which is just kind of like a ridiculous gun and explosion sim so i'm learning how to use guns in vr yay that's guns. cool though yeah, well, you know, for the coming race war, we've got to be prepared. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> or the coming uh, apocalypse, you know, we're going to have to be uh, ready. Yeah, um, the weirdest thing about the 
the guns, like especially the rifles and stuff, where like you would normally have a stock in your shoulder, like there's nothing there, so you're just holding up, trying to like hold your, both your hands steady. Um, uh-huh. So a lot of people have been making um, like DIY gun stocks to mount their controllers onto, and I think I might do one of those. Yeah, that is that that does sound pretty cool. Like, cause I don't know, <laughs> I don't I, I don't know how to think about like the increasing like realism that's going to happen in vr games you know because of the immersion that you get with like shooting people in vr is it going to start being like too much (laughs) you're gonna get ptsd from a vr yeah basically i mean there's that always sunny episode from the season where that happens (laughs) but i mean that's a thing that i think could happen like that's uh, that'd be cool you're not going to get ptsd from from rec room you're just gonna make make friends um the demos i've seen of people playing rec room it really does seem kind of like just an awesome like summer camp that you're hanging out with with all these people going and doing activities and like they were like just meeting complete strangers and being like uh, i shot you you're dead and the guy like you could see the headset go to the ground like he laid on his floor you know like (laughs) that's cool like it's that type of immersion i think that vr can do that other um forms can't do but um um, is is VR in trouble though, Matt? No. Are we worried about VR? No. Because there's there's a lot of people that are like writing hand wringing articles and stuff because it, it's not like and everybody's obsessed with like VR needs a killer app. Blah blah blah. Everybody needs a killer mm-hmm. app. Uh, no. Yeah. I I think it's gonna be a slow growth. I don't think. I think it is a any, slow like, growth as well. There's no killer app that's going to make people go, oh, wait, I need to spend a couple thousand dollars on a VR-ready PC and like yeah. a headset. Uh, it's just going to slowly become more comfortable and lighter and cheaper mm-hmm. and more accessible uh, to the point yeah. where like, eventually the computer that will power VR will be like the size of a cell phone. Yeah. Either... There, there, well, there, there might be some is. convergence. <laughs> well, that, that's the thing. there might Gear be some VR. convergence where like Gear VR becomes more and more powerful, and Oculus and Vive become more and more portable, and they just kind of combine into one thing. Um, but it's not going to be like suddenly yeah. the hot new thing is literally everybody gets a Vive for Christmas because it's just not that's just not the kind of technology that people will go. Uh, nuts for in large quantities because there's a big monetary investment there's a big space investment and uh, yeah if you don't already have the, have the computer for it that's another big hurdle yeah it's kind of interesting they're talking about um the i guess the vr and ar startup funding has decreased quite a bit um right now but i think I think a lot of that people have to say that also this has to do with a lot of um, very large startups, particularly like Magic Leap um, and some other AI yeah. startups that that took a lot of funding early on and kind of did nothing. So, I mean, if you look at quarter two, 2016, quarter one, 2017, the funding is pretty much the same. I think that it's I, I wouldn't say it's. In an issue you know they're saying that magic leap was just sucked up a ton of investor money and i think that kind of scared people a little bit but um i think this uh the new rick and morty game that's coming out is a very high profile release yeah um, i think it's the really... best selling game vr game on steam yeah and i i think that stuff like that is what's going to be to make someone like me buy vr well... Yeah, because and, that uh, the, seems the, really cool. where we are in VR right now is uh, like th- my Vive is basically just hacked together parts for other stuff. Like there's a yeah. couple of cell phone screens in there, and there's like positional yeah. tracking and stuff. But now we're at the point where companies are starting to develop dedicated hardware for this purpose, so they'll yes. be able to squeeze a lot more performance out of it. They'll be able to have uh screens that are lighter and possibly bend around your field of vision or something it, it, these are things that we could have done but there just wasn't the market for it 
yet and yeah. now they're starting to be that thing where they 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 um we're a different companies are seeing the possible future and like throwing a bunch of money into developing new types of screens and uh all that good stuff new types yeah, of it, uh graphics yeah. card architecture and stuff like that yeah i think that like i think it just kind of came out vr was like hey people are buzzing about this it's kind of like still in development a little bit we got to put something out you know what i mean like the, and so they they put the vibe out because they're like hey this is polished enough for people to buy it it's kind of expensive early adopters get in you know let's get some people playing games so we can get better at making them you know and mm. and i mean you look at indie devs it seems like every indie developer is working on vr stuff right now so yeah it's a uh, really inspiring the, place to like yeah. play around and yeah so i th- i mean that, it, obviously it's like that is the future though like, you know what I mean? Like, that is where immersiveness is going to go. So, whether it's five years from now and it hits mainstream or, you know, two years from now, we'll see. Um, we got a little bit of news here. The... That's the news theme. Did you see that the 25th anniversary of Night Trap is coming out? I have no idea what that is. You have not heard of Night Trap, Matt. Night Trap. Night Trap. This is a game that was banned for being too uh, violent. Um, let me Wait, give you I the, the description of, of this. Let me give you the description of Night Trap. This is well, widely lauded as one of the worst games ever. Um, oh yes, not yes, worst I've definitely heard of this. Okay, so it's an FMV okay. game where you are controlling the security system in a mansion where a bunch of girls are having a sleepover and there's these crazy alien monsters that are trying to get them and you have to set off the traps hence the night trap to stop them in it is an incredible um sequence of events including a song sung by one of the characters uh in a room um it's kind of actually really cool concept for a game because the idea is, is that you're kind of clicking between different rooms to see what's going on and setting off the traps to, you know, make sure you complete the game. But, you know, if you switch a room, you're not going to see the dialogue in one room. So multiple playthroughs to catch everything. You know what I mean? Um, The cover art is boasting over one and a half hours of real video. Yeah, it's it's a really cool little game. Uh, They are putting it out on the um, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One as 25th anniversary edition. I don't know if they have a price right now. I got to imagine it's going to be between ten and twenty dollars. Uh, and supposedly the Night Trap theme song, free MP3 download right now. So I'm going to get that as my ringtone. That's going to happen. So um, yeah, you can look forward to that. I don't know Night Trap, man. That's fun. I'm bringing it back. I'm bringing it back. Um, what other news do we have, Matt? Did you have news you wanted to talk about? I just discovered a game that I used to play on my parents' Windows 95 computer uh, a ton. So now I'm going to have to try and find that. This is I got to this from the Night Trap page. Okay. Uh, I guess it was the same development or company or something. Okay. But Load Runner. Load okay. Runner, The Legend Returns. Good times. Is that I spent a lot of time well? in. No. It's oh, no. Like, no. Uh, like a very primordial kind of Laura Crofty Tomb Raider kind of thing, maybe. But... Oh no, I know Load Runner. I mean, that, that was out on the NES, so this is yeah. like a PC version. Yeah. Oh, that looks. And I cool. spent a ton of time in the level editor, just mm-hmm. making shit up on that. Yeah, yeah, that was the idea of the NES one too. Is that it had a level editor, so you could create levels and have your friends play it. So that, yeah, that's really cool. Cool. Bring back the cool old games. And we're the dumb ones that people remember, like Night Trap. (laughs) Or um, Rex Ronan. Mm -hmm. Rex Ronan, experimental surgeon. Uh, Have you... uh, Have you read about the... Okay, so I I just saw this announced. We should talk about it. The, the 2DS XL, we talked a little bit before we started. So you've heard of the 2DS, right? Yeah. 
It's a 3DS without the 3D part. And it's $80. Um, and it's not a clamshell, so it doesn't open and close. And it... it, Yeah, so that that's what that is. They're making the new 2DS XL. Um, it's got the big screen, like the 3DS XL. Um, it basically looks identical to a 3DS XL with a little bit of different form factor um, without the 3D effect. Uh, and it's $150, whereas the 3DS XL is $200. So... It's kind of a, a cheaper version uh, to get in the 3DS. It's kind of interesting to come out because I think a lot of people thought with the Switch is going to replace the handheld, yet now they're putting out another version of the handheld. Uh, I honestly, I think people are like, why is this happening? Um, the Switch is, is maybe a premium handheld that I think is going to take over the market maybe in the future. But right now, they got a lot of DS games to sell. And uh, why not make a cheaper version for people to buy? Um, yeah, so I don't know. Interesting. I don't know where that's going to go. I just bought a Switch. Did you go get one? I bought a Switch. I'm not going to get a 2DS XL. I have a 3DS XL right now. Not the new 3DS XL. So there's a couple games I can't play. But I bought a Switch. Uh, it was on, on sale on Amazon today for about 20 minutes. They had it, so I bought it just because fuck it. I'm I'm hyped. I don't I already own most of the games that are coming out on it, so I don't know what I'm going to play on it, but some of those Neo Geo games seem pretty fun. Um the remasters they have and I I'll, I'll find some stuff. Portable gaming, baby. So it's I did a thing. Yeah. Um I just <laughs> downloaded Load Runner the Legend Returns. It's 6 megabytes. So yeah, it's a it's quick a, download. I was about to say, I'm pretty sure that's considered abandonware as far as I was reading. Yeah. So it's out of out of copyright, so anyone could download it. Um, well, that's I pretty cool. find uh, the right <laughs> compatibility mode to run it in. Uh, yes. Um, so, interesting. This didn't come up uh, last week when the announcement kind of came, but we've seen the trailer now. Call of Duty World War II. Call of Booty. Thanks, Matt. (laughs) Low-hanging fruit. Matt, low-hanging fruit hag. Um, So, yeah, while uh, Call of Duty World War II, it seems really cool. Um, They're kind of going back. They're kind of... Like, people are like, oh, they're going... (sighs) Ah. (laughs) Like, I've gotten kind of tired of all the modern shooters that that have come out. You know, it's kind of like, yeah, it's every game is kind of like the near future or like slightly future shooter. Um, they all kind of feel the same. You know, Battlefield 1 came out and people loved it. Um, so I think they're just like, we got to go to World War Two, And I love it because I kind of love World War Two. It's a fun war to, to or at least a fun war to look at history. <laughs> it's a fun war, says John. Yes. Well, not not that war is fun, but it's just as a history buff, it's it's interesting to like get back at that. Um, some of the interviews I've seen uh, with the developers, it sounds like they're trying to do a lot of really cool stuff. Like there's uh, you know one of the black battalions. Uh, they they're gonna have a story from that. You know they're trying to diversify kind of the breadth of storytelling. Um, I suppose like, there's a part where you play as a child. Okay, um, it's probably right. play a, a a lady in the French Resistance. I think they said, which seems pretty cool. Like seeing the French Resistance kind of shown in a game would be kind of neat. Like, I'm just excited because that was some of the cool shit about the World War One storyline. And Battlefield was like, hey, here's some like very you know you had your Italian player storyline, you had your you know French storyline, you had your you know English storyline. So they kind of showed a lot of different cool things and and. It was kind of neat seeing the breadth of that conflict shown through um, that. And we kind of really haven't seen much um, of World War II outside of the trying to be like Saving Private Ryan that every game has been. Um, So, yeah. I don't know. I don't know, man. That is... It's going to be good. There's a couple... (laughs) I don't know. I don't even know if I want to comment on... uh, so Polygon also had a weird think piece um, 
where they complained about the diversity in the game, about how they're just like checking boxes off. Oh. You know, and it's like, all right, they're trying though. Like, what are you, why, are you, what are you doing here? Like, they're like, I think they're. It seemed like they were trying to be earnest here. That that, that I think piece is a little bit uh, complaining, especially since like, I think somebody responded to it with like a picture of a video that came out with one of the developers. This is like head developer. And it's this, you know, African American guy who's working on the game. It's like, this is not the all white staff that you uh, mentioned in your uh, article here. Kind of disparaging it. It's like, why? I don't even see it on the head front page at Polygon anymore. So there's a little backlash on that. A little hot take. Hot takes are never good. Never good. Um, yeah. So I'm excited. I like World War II gaming, and it's been a long time since we've had one. Battlefield 1942, Matt, let's play. <laughs> I still have that on my computer. I, I do, too. I wish it worked better. I wish you could stream it. does not like streaming. <laughs> no, <laughs> it, it doesn't breaks. like alt-tabbing. No, which I hate that. Remember when like game, every game was like that? <clears throat> Games are so much better with alt tabbing now. It's, it's classic. Um, is there anything alt else you want to talk about before we end? Because I think we're done. No. Alt tabbing or alt writing? You know what I'm talking about? Oh man, we went to Breitbart. We talked about World War II, and now you're bringing the alt right into this. This is a yeah. I've turned over this is a new tricky leaf. episode. You know, I spent a lot. I don't a like lot the, of the places period, you're bringing me to. I spent a lot of the period, like a period of time yesterday, making comparisons to uh, battle rifles and looking up like various guns. So, <laughs> so now you're on a list. I'm on a list too because I, uh, I have to. H3 VR is so realistic. I have to like Google how do I turn off the safety on a specific kind of sniper rifle and stuff. Nice. <laughs> yeah, you're just like okay. In the M82, how do I <laughs> how do I get the safety off? Yeah, because it's like realistically built. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but where can people find you on the internet if they want to find you, man? You can find me. Uh, uh, twitch.tv slash Music, where I'm constantly banning people in chat or That's Matt right. Hag Music anywhere where can people find you John I can be found at bornintheities.net where I post the episodes or I'm at john underscore danger on twitter um, and I'm TJ Matt put up a May. delightful video of a cow you you can find me at May of May or May of May 84. Um, That's right. <laughs> I want to congratulate the Milwaukee Bucks on the great season. Couldn't make it to the next round of the playoffs, but had a couple good games. We'll get them next year. Um, I don't know. That's it, man. Are we done? Yeah, I think we're done. We're done. So it's a short one. We gotta play some games. That's right. I mean, I'm killing the stream. Alright, we should be live on YouTube in a minute or two. However long the delay takes. Astonishing. Actually, you know what? Um, if I end up jumping in, I'll jump in. I'm gonna just drop out of the call. You guys, can, you guys can just okay. do this podcast today. All right, you can that's listen fair to us on Twitch or whatever. <laughs> yeah, if you yeah, want to like maybe. call in, I don't know if I want to do that while I'm driving. Um, what do we it's too have? Complicated. I can't text into that. No, that's fine. Yeah, that's probably a good All idea. Right, really quick before I go, um, guess how many hours I've been playing Persona Five. Uh, I'm gonna say fifty. Seventy. I just hit the eighty hour mark. As oh my one. god! <laughs> so, TJ, did you see the new Nintendo announcement? What? No. The 2DS XL. Are you serious? Yeah, Nintendo just announced the 
2DS XL. What the fuck? It's basically the new 3DS without the 3D. Is it? Does it close? Yeah. So the, the, it's not a slate model. It's a flip model. Holy fuck! 150. That's not bad price. No, not at all. It's, I I might buy one. Bit, wait, isn't this something that we've been saying? Is maybe they should just make a model without 3D? Yeah. And, it's kind of pointless. Yeah, that, that's not bad at all. Are we live wow. on YouTube yet, Matt? Yeah, we should be. All right. All right. It's it's well, not I'm showing gonna drop up out. on the thing, but I might take a You guys have a good show. I will listen to this later. All right, perfect. Um, All right. Maybe keep in contact. Maybe we might be able to get an A eaten this week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now that you have all the data in the world. I have all the data in the world. I'm going to video the crap out of this. I'm not going to do it in the car where it's dark, so that's why I'm not doing it now. But All right. Take care, guys. Have a good show. Hey. Shut the fuck right, up, Steve. Ya. You're just meowing at me. I'm just reading through this Uber article so that I can sure. talk about it if I need to. I'm gonna be I'm a switch owner. Yeah you are. I've made the switch. Haha! <laughs> <laughs> Aha! I'm a switch owner. Anyway, there's nothing to play on it now, so that's it, really. Did you get it from Mario Kart 8? No, I already have Mario Kart 8. Oh, is that <laughs> the one that already was out? Yeah, it was on Wii U. Oh. I uh, it was a new one. So it's actually kind of interesting. Just got it for no that... reason. Of the entire Nintendo Switch lineup, I have every single game. <laughs> I have, uh, basically, because I have Wii U Zelda, I have Zelda, or I have the Mario Kart that's coming out. The game, the Puyo Puyo Tetris game, I have that. I bought the Japanese version for PS4. So I basically have everything. Um, so, but I'm gonna probably buy, I'm gonna buy the Puyo Puyo Tetris again, cause it's only 30. And that'd be nice, that's a nice, a Tetris Puyo Puyo Pop game portable is a pretty good proposition. As well as there's a couple other games on there I'll probably end up buying. You can get I mostly one, got it. Switch? No, I mostly got it. That's if it was ten dollars, I might buy it. You can milk um, some cows. Yeah, so I'll probably end up picking up a couple games, but I, I kind of bought it just because I know that they're super rare, and I want one, and I have the money, and I want one. <laughs> So, yeah. I don't want to have it tomorrow. It's just nice. Like, you know, the more you think about it, it's just kind of like... Um... I don't know. It's just kind of like one of those things that you don't think about, like, do you need a new... You know, console? Because I already have the PS4, you know, and this isn't as powerful, but... It's portable. You know what I mean? Like, the idea is that you can play it anywhere is pretty awesome. Like, it's a really mm -hmm. powerful portable. So. I'm reading... Also, a really good article. That is the oral history of Austin Powers. The Hollywood Reporter went out. I guess the very first Austin Powers, Powers came out 20 years ago. Oh, Christ, so. I'm old. Yeah, but there's a lot of really interesting information about, like, how it got made and, like, all the people in it, so. <laughs> Apparently that, uh, that nudity, nudity blocking scene where they have, like, everything just, like, placed in a way it took a lot of takes, basically. Um, so. 
That was pretty funny. They said they were both nude but covered with like tape. <laughs> <laughs> so like just their bits covered. That's kind of fun though. Like they had to get it perfect. 25 takes he said it took. So. But it looks really good in the movie so I guess it was worth it. Are you ready to go live on Twitch? Because I am ready. Yeah. Uh, I'm going live on Twitch. This ends up being a little shorter. It's fine. You know. That's We're down a man. what women say to me. Hey, oh. Uh, that was a good joke. That was a really good joke. Mm-hmm. I love this version. <laughs> All right, are you ready? Might yeah. Might as well start. Oh, did I get an update? I got an update. Someone's live on Twitch. We're live on Twitch. That's us. We're the ones who are live. I'm going to watch we'll do it I'm live. Watch now tab. Oh, Matt, you know what I've noticed? Yes. No, this hasn't happened in an episode. But you are, you are very well aware that if you play audio... Like uh, like a, a, a new, like an article plays audio in the background, I won't be able to hear it, but it will show up in the the MP3 version. Yeah, when did that happen? That has only ever that happened when we were like setting up for a show, and you had like an article you opened up and it auto played a video, and like I don't know if you couldn't hear it, but but definitely it showed up in the recording. <laughs> so I don't know, just gotta be careful, but that's not that big of a deal. Yeah, I don't know. With, uh, I, I don't remember 10, what it was, actually... but I think it happened, and I like couldn't stop it in time or whatever. And then I didn't want to bring it up on the show to like derail everything, so it's just like, eh, eh, we'll see. Oh. Yeah. All right, I'm ready to start though. All right, let's start the show. Mm-hmm. 